Good morning. So, we're going to continue on with our letters of the alphabet. It is me, your humble, friendly neighborhood stroke assaulter. Uh, we are going to continue on with the letter I for invisible. That is right, under the I, invisible. What I mean by invisible? So, brain injuries and strokes, because stroke is a form of a brain injury, is a very invisible disorder at times. So, and it's very perturbing, frustrating, um, in some cases demeaning. Uh, so, if I had pronounced outward physical sign that I had a stroke, such as uh, paralysis, I'm in a wheelchair, uh, my aphasia is still ridiculously bad, you know, foot drop, whatever the case may be, you would know there is something actually wrong with me, right? Uh, let's just look at the realities. My aphasia, you really won't see it unless I'm stressed or overtired um, or highly emotional. You, unless you know my normal gait, you wouldn't know when I'm starting to get the, the struggle bus face that I'm becoming overwhelmed by my environment. Um, unless you know my normal gait or you can identify foot drop, you wouldn't know I have foot drop. Fun fact. So there's a lot of things that go on with stroke eh, that are invisible. You know, like... I appreciate people mean well when they say, hey, you look great. You're doing well. Again, what you see is the physical snapshot, the maybe five to ten minutes in my presence. Um, what you don't see is the background, right? What you don't see is, well, maybe it took me 20 minutes to get dressed that morning, right? Like if I go to put on shoes that have laces, um, that's going to be an obstacle. If I put on shirts that have buttons, depending on the type and size of buttons, that's going to be an obstacle. If I have to put on a shirt and tie, that's going to be an obstacle that includes extra swearing. Um, you know, depending on, and that's why predominantly for the last almost three months, you've seen me wear t-shirts. It's because it is simply the easiest garment to put on. Yes, I'm lazy. Get over it. I had a stroke. So, When people say, hey, you look well, yeah, I do look well. You are right. However, what you don't see is the background to that, right? So there are many things that can hinder someone's stroke recovery, right? Um, or be a part of their recovery that you may not even know, right? So... Things like, oh, but you look so good, or I don't see anything that's wrong with you, right? And you just see the physical, right? So you might, as having recently gone through a stroke, you may become impatient or frustrated because you're not able to concentrate or remember um, the same way you used to be able to. Um... You may overlook the fact that you have certain disabilities because of your stroke. Uh, you may have the type of impact where you forget a part of your body. So, you know, you now walk into doorways as opposed to walking through the door. Um, you may choose to be willfully forgetful that you know, it looks like dementia is coming down the road and you just want to ignore it because you don't want to have to admit that you may be suffering the early throes of dementia. No, I do not have dementia. So anybody that I happen to personally know, panic, no, I don't have dementia, right? You may get frustrated a little bit more readily. Um, you may have hearing problems. 
most people know what stroke is or have heard of a stroke. Most people don't know what aphasia is. Um, aphasia is a communications difficulty and it, it can impact many people in many ways. Um, so at that point, depending on how your aphasia impacts you, right? Let me just say this. Having aphasia doesn't mean you're fucking deaf. So talking louder with me doesn't make it any better. Um, in fact, it makes me want to walk away and call you an asshole. Right? Um, also, with the stroke, there is anxiety, right? There is depression, there is fatigue, there are headaches, there is overstimulation. So, a stroke can be a very invisible dis disorder, right? Um, I've had a brain injury. Thank you, my stroke. Uh, is it a very large brain injury? No, not at all. Um, is it going to be life-altering? In some ways, maybe. Uh, is it going to be irrevocably, you know, the world is coming to a crashing, thundering halt? No, things aren't going to thunder in like that. It will mean changing my routines. It will mean uh, looking at the world a little bit differently. It'll mean, you know, I might never be on a two-wheeled bicycle ever again. I might only be able to be on a three-wheeled bike. Yes, a tricycle. Uh, you know, there's there's many things, right? Now, one of the problems with things having being hidden, right, or not obvious, is people sometimes may not believe the fact that you've had an injury, right? I've had a stroke. Um, I have encountered people that think I'm joking. Well, I, I've done a couple videos about those people. They are assholes. Um, you know, so you're going to be discriminated against due to the fact that people are going to be ignorant and choose not to believe that, yeah, you have had a stroke. Um, also, you may be concerned, rightfully or not, about the attitude of others right and how ignorant they may or may not be right um and how that may impact you know how you go into a store uh, that may impact uh what stores you go into that may impact if you choose to end a relationship with a certain retailer uh, because of the way you've been treated in that store i've actually done that um it may impact how you go back to work it may impact um you know very various things um when it comes to just interacting with people, right? So it all depends, right? Now, what else is hidden from people, right? Well, if you were to look at me, right, you can't see any deficits or detriments, right? I don't normally present as having one. I don't have any visible supports like a cane or a wheelchair. I have considered there may be days I need a cane, and I'm also in considering I may need a support animal. So yes, I may get a support dog. Um, right? This is more likely going to be permanent in some respects. I'm hoping it's permanent in the short term and not permanent as in forever permanent. Um, so I'm hoping it's sort of a transient, sort of non-persistent stage, right? And then, just like people, for example, that have, you know, diabetes or asthma or epilepsy, right? I, you know, they have insulin for the diabetic, or they test their blood sugars, or they're on a special diet. For people that have asthma or breathing disorders, they have their inhalers, their puffers, what have you, right? Um, same thing for epilepsy, they probably have a little medical alert bracelet and they have some kind of medication they will take. Well, I have medications I take every single morning. I don't have the diabetes, I breathe okay, and I don't have seizures. Luckily, uh, I could have a seizure because of the stroke, uh, but I don't have a seizure disorder, you know, because I would have thrown one by now. Now, here is the dilemma. When you have an invisible disability, right? Uh, who do you tell? 
disclosing this invisible disability may be a problem, right? Um, there are times where you're going to have to disclose it simply to get things done. Uh, now, I luckily had my stroke at work, so when it comes time for me to return back to work, um, I don't have to disclose to anyone that, hey, I had a stroke. Y'all fucking watched it. Um, will that temper how I go back to work? Definitely, I'm going to engage the services of a rehab therapist that specifically deals with occupational therapies and the returning to work of brain injury and stroke persons, right? So, someone that can help me formulate a plan with my employer uh, that will, you know, help me get to where I need to be. Um, mainly because there's a lot of cognitive work at my work. So, I got to make sure that I'm doing the right thing by my thinker, right? Um... Now, here's the problem. If I disclose to certain people, are they actually going to believe that I've had a massive, irrevocable, life-changing event called a stroke? And it's included funness, right? Um, be it headaches, be it fatigue, uh, be it hypersensitivity to noise and, and fluorescent lights, be it, you know, whatever the problems I have or what are the problems you have, right? Um, you know, you may find... That as the day progresses, you become more tired and, and more stressed, and, and it's just difficult for you to deal with your day in, day out. So it, it all really depends on sort of what's going on there, right? Um, and then you're worried, are people going to actually want to recognize what you're going through as a disability, right? Oh, you're just looking for a pity party. No, I have some deficits that need to be dealt with, right? Um, there is some anxiety with that, right? So, I tell you I have dif difficulties, right? And you don't want to, and, and you you avoid doing the whole, well, but you look great. That's nice. I look great. Physically, I present well. Physically, I present well. Cognitively, it's a bit of a shit show at times. Um... So we're not, we're not going to do the whole patronizing, oh, you look really well, but you look great. Oh, I don't see anything wrong with you, right? Now, I'm going to disclose to you, are you going to choose to accept what I'm telling you is a disability? And it is a real impacting thing to me, right? And, you, and are you going to make, are you going to treat me as someone who's faking or not disabled enough, um, you know, uh, are you going to treat my unique situations as real, um, you know, so, and therein lies the problem, are, is someone going to treat you with the level of dignity, uh, and respect that you need to be treated with to get you through the situations that you're going to have to go through throughout life. Be that in relationships, be that with friends, family, uh, workplace, leisure activities, or just going to get a cup of coffee, right? So, um, and then people will typically judge you on how you look, right? So depending on how well you physically look, right? People go, oh, you're, you're perfectly okay. Yeah, kinda, maybe sorta. Physically, I'm 85 to 95% where I was before the stroke. And that depends on the day. Cognitively, Okay, let's be real here. I bought a book, which I'm actually going to do a book review on, called My Stroke of Insight. Hold that thought. Right here, My Stroke of Insight. So, if you've had a stroke, it was suggested to me that I buy and read this book. So, before my stroke, I could easily crack off two to three hundred pages in no time at all. It took me an hour to get through 
45 minutes to get through 77 pages. Do not ask me to recall anything on any of those pages. Before my stroke, I had a steel trap for memory. Now, I might have to start writing stuff down. Right? So, I don't have the same level of attention span. I don't have the same level of focus. I still have aphasia from time to time. I do have balance issues occasionally. Right? So there's a lot of things right there that can be difficult because people are going to judge you because you look good. Right? You look you look physically well and capable, right? I look okay. Right? I don't have a facial droop. I don't have, you know, um, you know, sort of a shuffle walk or, or whatnot, a limp. Now, for those of you that need to support the stroke assaulter, so you stroke supporters, and I don't mean you're like supporting strokes because you want people to have strokes because that'd be morbid, right? First off, don't judge, right? Don't do the whole book by its cover, right? Oh, you look great. Yeah, fuck you. That's what I have to say to you. But you look great. Yeah, I look great. Yes, I feel healthy. Yes. Yeah, there's still things going on there. Don't be surprised by what you see. Please expect the unexpected. I can have a great day up until 10 minutes ago. I can have a great day for the entire day. I could wake up with a mind-numbing, splitting headache, and that'll be that, right? Think before you speak. T please take the time before you open your embouchure and make those vocal-like sounds before you say things that might be unhelpful or even hurtful, like, hey, you seem fine. Um, right? Now then, listen to what the person who's had the stroke or the brain injury is telling you about their strengths and their difficulties and respond accordingly. Right? So if I, if I intend to engage you in a meaningful conversation about where I'm at, where my strengths are, where my difficulties are, please do me the justice and just the common courtesy of actually listening to what I'm saying and then respond in kind, right? Um, just because you cannot see, perceive or see the difficulty that I know exists doesn't mean it does not exist, right? And then understand the potential outcomes of the brain injury, right? And keep being judgmental to a minimum and don't make assumptions. Because a stroke and a brain injury, right, they're unique to the individual. I could have this exact same stroke all over again. Everything is equal and I can have a completely different outcome. And then when you consider problem solving, right, you need to consider all sides of the, any dilemma that can occur with the stroke assaulter. Work out the ways you can best resolve or minimize anything that you need to do to help them, right? Now, when it comes to the invisible part of having a stroke, that is the actual aftermath once you're up and walking because remember I can walk I can feed myself I can wipe my own ass I can communicate with people and I can understand what they're saying and they can understand what I'm saying okay. so to look at me you would not perceive that I've had a stroke however because my situation is now invisible it's actually more difficult to deal with because I get a lot of the, oh, but you look great. You're doing well. Yes and no. Yes, I look great. Yes, I'm doing well. No, some days aren't so great. No, some days I don't do so well. So you might want to reconsider the things you say before you say them. And on that note, I'm going to do another video shortly. I don't know what on, but I will. 
Um, so please, if you happen to know someone that's currently going through the throes of the recovery um, and they're on their journey of rehabilitation from their stroke, please recommend the channel to them. Like, share, subscribe with your friends. Uh, start leaving comments, guys, because the comments are dying away. And if you either happen to notice in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being facial droop, inability to raise both arms equally or effectively, inability to smile equally, effectively, or possibly at all, uh, slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, inability to stand unaided, general body weakness or weakness on one side, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple could save a life.